The 944 is back and we're catching up on some 2020 upgrades and maintenance we meant to do way back last year. We're putting some new discs and pads on the front of the 944, ready to get it on track. So now we've got the car in the air, we can start taking everything apart to put our lovely new EBC brakes on. Now I have had these ones before, we put them on the TT way back when, well before we started doing pedal box. And then I stole them and put them on the Golf. So they're really nice, they work really well, and I hope to actually get some proper use out of them. But before we can do that on here, we have to dismantle everything that there is on this, on this hub spindle. So, the caliper needs to come off first, but because these are quite well worn, as I say, we've been trying to do this brake swap for at least 12 months now, we need to get the caliper off the disc, and there is a big old lip on here, which is currently retaining the pads, and unfortunately we can't easily push them back out without having the caliper off, so this is going to be a bit tricky. So we're going to pull the wear sensor off first of all, because we don't need that right now. That can come off and get out of the way, and we just start taking this apart. So that's done, then this retaining clip comes off here, and now these pins can come out, which is probably going to require a hammer, or a ratchet, because every tool is a hammer. These shouldn't be very tight, they should come out relatively easily, so you shouldn't need to put a huge amount of force on them. They should just very gently tap so it shouldn't damage them. Brake pad retention spring that sits on top and then this is where the brakes are. Now on the back there are two very big bolts, they are 19 mil. we've already cracked them off so spin these off and then we can start trying to fight the caliper off the disc. So that's the caliper loose, now we just need to pull it off and actually this one might go without having to beat the, uh, the pads out. Now we've got the caliper off, we can start getting the hub apart. Now there's this little metal cup that sits on the end that protects all of the innards of the hub. There's a little hole in the end, a little square hole, which a square peg fits into, as you'd probably expect, and there's a little, tiny little circlip that sits over the top of that, which we've put somewhere safe and I don't have to hand right now, but that holds the speedo cable in. This wheel is what runs the speedo, so we've had a new cable put in because the speedo wasn't always working and it's mostly fixed it. So that cap comes off and then inside you've got this little pinch nut. Now it doesn't use a castle nut, the Golf on its stub axles has a castle nut that sits around the top and then once you've got it to the right tightness to stop it coming undone, has a split pin that goes through and that folds back over. So that all works really nicely. This one has a pinch nut, so you position it in the right place and then this just acts as a lock nut. Now there is a small hole that lines up in the hub and goes down and you use that to unloosen the nut, or the bolt rather, so it's just a little 6mm allen key, that spins out enough and then this nut should turn, obviously it's still going to be a little bit tight, but then you use square end of the allen key, drop it in through the hole in the hub and then you can actually use the hub to help you loosen the nut off. So to put the new discs on we need to split them off this hub assembly and there are five bolts going through each one of these dimples and they're just 13mm nuts and heads on the other side, but before we do that, there is quite a big lip on here and the pads that were in, you can actually just about see there's a lip at the top edge where they fit in and they were holding in. So these did not have much wear on them at all, or they were incredibly hard, because this car's done about 5,000 miles that we know of and we've never changed these pads, we didn't do them when we were doing them last time because we had new discs and pads to go on. So these appear to be extremely hard, they're um, Techstar T400s, I'm not sure if that's a particularly hard compound, some places say that might be the OEM pad, but obviously this is not going to be original original, but how worn down is this disc? 1863, the new disc is 
0.27. It does also say on the very edge of this disc, minimum wear depth, 19.1 millimeters. So these are definitely overworn and probably should have been changed maybe 10,000 miles ago. So it's a good job we're finally getting around to this. Now to get these off easily, it is a bit of a two person job. We need two wrenches. So all the bolts are out now, we just need to separate the hub from the disc and they are pretty well attached. That does not want to come off. Fortunately, I have a three foot pry bar <laughs> and that makes pretty light work of it. And you can see around here where there's a little bit of corrosion that's gone through, that's what was holding it all in place. And on the hub side, on the back, actually this one's reasonably good, there's a little bit of corrosion just come through so I have to clean that up because these need to be absolutely flat and mated perfectly together otherwise you risk cracking the hub so we're going to clean all this lot off and get this back on well not this back on we'll get this one back on so we've got the hub and the disc back together we've torqued everything back up and we're just going to put a little bit of fresh grease on this stub axle now it's quite lucky when we were torquing these back up the torque wrench that we've got went just low enough to be able to get a, an accurate reading. It's uh, about 23 and a half um, Newton meters that you have to set it to and ours can just about manage 20. So yeah, could have been a lot worse. So put that back on and hopefully without getting any on the disc itself, this will slide back on nicely. There we go and seat itself in there. Now this is tricky. So the bearing that's going back in is the original one. It is perfectly fine. It's not showing any signs of wear and it wasn't noisy at all. So we might as well reuse these. It's just a cone bearing. So this goes in and there's a detent on the nut you can see, or maybe you can see, sorry, on the washer on the front. That slides in like that. The uh, clamping nut has a little triangle on the front of it, which goes on the outside. And if you look at it, there's a very, very flat, smooth face on one side and the other side is a little bit more rough. So the smooth face obviously has to go onto the uh, washer itself. And the other giveaway, if you put it in the other way around, this Allen key wouldn't line up with the slice in the hub that would allow you to get the Allen key in to fasten it up again. So now we've got this almost all the way in, we just want to set the preload so that it's at the right level so that this isn't able to rock and you'd wear out the bearing and then everything would be terrible all of the time. So what we've done, we've just spun this nut round using the wheel hub itself, pinching in here to get a little bit of preload on. Now we've already tightened this up most of the way, so it should be fine. And according to the manual, it wants to be able to spin freely, which it can, there's no drag, that's all fine. And it wants to start, it doesn't want to just continue spinning forever. I mean, obviously it wouldn't, you know, we obey the laws of thermodynamics in this household. Um, but that's not grinding, it's not loose, it's not difficult to spin, it moves. It's, it, it seems, from everything that we can tell, to be about right. And this is about the same, that, same way that I set up the ones on the Golf and they've always been fine as well. So we can now just nip this down, closing up that screw in the top of there, through the little detent we just tighten that up. Now it doesn't need to be epically tight doing this up. We see this is quite a long Allen key, so I don't want to just gun it all the way into the ground, but that seems pretty good. So we've just wound the calipers back and now we can fit the new pads in. Wasn't actually much that needed winding because the pads that we took out were fairly new. They really hadn't had much wear at all. So we just need to get these two bolts back in here. Let's get this started and then I can get the, well, I can let go of that at any rate because happily these pads go in from the top rather than having to mount them into the pads and then put the whole assembly onto the, the caliper and the carrier, or the, sorry, the disc and the carrier all in one. So that's the caliper bolts back in. Now we can get our swanky new pads out. And I think these are yellow stuffs that we got for this one. Oh yes, very, very definitely yellow stuff pads. I said, oh, it's so easy to just drop these in, he says. No, it's not. So no, you can drop one side in where the piston is, but unfortunately on the back of the carrier on this side, there is a little key that fits into 
this hole on the back of the pad and that's not just these ones the previous ones had it as well so it's not just like the EBC ones being weird and needing the key they all do it <sighs> so take two now we have the pads in so this one on this side you have to uh, slot in and key on the inside edge of this arm this one does just slot in from the top but once you've got it out you might as well put them in at the same time it actually isn't that much easier either way do make them make sure you take the uh, brake hose line out it does make it a lot easier to move the caliper around that was fighting us for a minute so now we need to put all the retention pins in and we have all of these but these are not what we're going to use we have brand new retention pins for the pads in a bag that refuses to come open despite being an easy open box it is not playing the game so here are lovely new pins and new clips and everything this is excellent i might actually need a slightly smaller oh no and i didn't even lose it go me Well, there's another day's work on the 944 done. We keep managing to have reasonable success with this, all things considered, coming here, sorting some work out on it and not having any layovers. So hopefully touch, well, I guess, steel. Uh, it, that continues, but the brakes are all bedded in. We've taken it out for a drive, as you saw. It sounds really, really good at full chat. It's just had a load of work done on the engine, new belts, pulleys, all sorts of things, and it is running beautifully right now. Now, if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell for all of the notifications. You'll find out when we put out new episodes and when we do our live streams. And if you'd like to check out shop.pedalbox.show, you can have a look at our merch. We've got new t-shirts coming soon, hats, beanies, all sorts of things. And if you want to support our builds directly for the Thunderbird, the Kit Car, or the Golf, or the SD1, you can subscribe at patreon.com slash pedalbox show from as little as a dollar a month and we do appreciate all of our patrons contributions but for now i'm going to send the 944 on its way and it can leave us for another time <laughs>